Hello, in this video we'll focus on basic operations on tasks and the delay functions. Let's have a closer look what is the difference between OS delay and OS delay until functions. OS delay is calling vtask delay and requires include vtask delay within freertoysconfig.h file. It sends the calling task from run to blocked state for a given number of milliseconds counting from this function call. OS delay until is calling vtask delay until and requires inclusion of vtask delay until within freertoysconfig.h file. It checks the current text value xtask the get tick count function and uh, subtract this value from the specified delay. Then it is sending the calling task from run to block state for remaining milliseconds period. Let's have a closer look on the delay functions available within the free RTOS. So we've got two of them, OS delay, which is calling the free RTOS API vtask delay function. And the second one is OS delay until, which is calling vtask delay until function. Let's focus on OS delay. OS delay is calling vtask delay from FreeRTOS API. It is defined within the tasks.c file. And to use this function, we need to enable include vtask delay within the configuration of a FreeRTOS. The vtask delay function is performing the following list of operations. It is uh, first calling uh, the vtask suspend all function, which is in fact freezing all the tasks, freezing the scheduler without disabling the interrupts of the hardware. So the RTO stick will be held, will be stopped uh, for a while, and uh, there would be no operation on the free RTS on other components. Then it is uh, removing the task which is calling this function from the running list, from the run list, and it's moving it to the delayed state by sending the task name to the delayed list with given delay value. And uh, it is done by using function PRV ADD current state, current task to the delayed list. Then after this operation, which is in fact sending the task from run to the blocked state, the scheduler is resuming its operations by function X task resume all function execution. And at the end, there is a trigger for the context switch by triggering pent SV interrupt using the macro port yield within API. And uh, this macro is switching the context to the other task, which is in a ready state. Let's do some practice. To save some time needed for the new project creation, we will reuse previous exercise done at the beginning of this session. In case you would like to store each exercise, please use File Export option and use an example in dedicated zip file. In case you would like to make an exercise from scratch for your STM32 platform, please create a new project with an STM32 CubeMX or STM32 Cube IDE for your circuit MCU and then please change time base for HAL from default SysTick to Timer6. It can be done with a Sys peripheral group. Enable freer to OS in version CMC's OS version 2. Additionally, after code generation, please implement the function task underscore action. In our examples, we are using it uh, to accept one har argument, uh, one letter, and uh, return nothing. This letter is passed over SWO interface to display small comments from the tasks or interrupts but you can implement your own task underscore action function, of course. Let's have a look how does it look like in a time domain. Both tasks have the same priority. So task one and task two have the same priority is priority normal and idle task has lower priority. So it will be executed only if both tasks would be blocked. So what I am doing within the code, I'm invoking some task action of task one and then I'm calling the OS delay. OS delay function is sending task one from running state to the blocked state for a given time, in our case one second. So OS delay is sending this task one and it is done by triggering the pent SV software interrupt to switch the context. Pent SV interrupt is selecting task two as a second one to be executed. Task two is performing his operation, sending this task action with argument two. And again is calling OS delay with argument 1000 millisecond. And again, it is done like this that uh, is triggered pent SV software interrupt, which is selecting the only 
read the task, which is idle task. Idle task is uh, executed for a bit less than one second, and then the delay ends, and the task one is ready to be executed. It's coming back from the blocked state into the ready state. So pentest v is called because task one has higher priority than idle. So it is uh, immediately exchanging with idle. So pentest v is changing, switching the context from idle to task one. And again, task one is sending task action with argument one, and it is going into the blocked state by calling OS delay. So it is done by calling pent SV software interrupt, which is switching the context from task one to task two, and the story continues like at the beginning. Mid below, we can see how it looks like with the states. So at the beginning, both of the tasks are in a ready state. Then task one is running, task two is ready. Then task two is running and the task one is blocked. Then both tasks are blocked. And then after, uh, let's say this almost one second elapsed, the task one is back and task two is still blocked. And then in the meantime, task two is unblocked, it's in ready state, and uh, there is the last switch from task one to task two. And it is going like this all around. Within the configuration, so pinout and configuration tab at uh, STM32Cube MX or STM32Cube IDE, press free RTS button and select task and queues. We will see on the screen the configuration window of FreeRTOS. We've displayed the list of the current tasks. At the beginning, we can see that only one task is defined. It is called default task. So what we need to do is to rename it to task one. We can keep the priority OS priority normal, the stack size kept to 128 words, Entry function, let's name it start task one. Call the generation, it will be the default without any parameters, so null, and allocation dynamic. Once we do it, we will add another task, so we need to press add button with below, and we can specify the next task. So the name, it would be task two, priority the same, OS priority normal, the same stack size, 128 words, Entry function, it will be start task two, and the rest of the parameters we keep as default. So code generation default, parameter null, and allocation dynamic. As we discussed at the beginning of this session, FreeRTOS allows us to scale its size, its uh, usage of the flash and RAM. We can enable and disable some functionalities within the config parameters and include parameters of FreeRTOS configuration. Those components are stored within freertos config.h file. And uh, one of those components which are not necessary for the preparations is a delay function. So in case we would like to have a delay function which would send our task from run state to the blocked state for a given time, we need to enable vtask delay function. To do this, we should go into the include parameters tab in freertos configuration and change for vtask delay position option from disabled to enabled. Last step within the Cubemix configuration is to configure the project and generate the code. To do this, please go into the project manager tab, then within the project tab, please select the project name, project location, and type of the toolchain we'll use. In Cubemix, we can select different toolchains IRKL, AC61 or Cube IDE. Within Cube IDE environment, we will have only one option. It will be STM32 Cube IDE. To generate the code, we need to click either Generate Code button on the upper right corner, which is the case of STM32 Cube MX, or press Generate Code within STM32 Cube IDE. Let's have a closer look on a code generated by our STM32 Cube MX or Cube IDE. Let's open main.c file and uh, coming from the top, within the private variables, we can see the declaration of two handlers of our tasks, which are specified within the configurator. Then within the private function prototypes, we can see the declaration of two functions, which has been assigned to those tasks. Please have a look that both functions are returning nothing and uh, accepting the argument as a pointer to any type. So pointer to void. 
We will not use an argument, passing an argument to the functions within this exercise, but it is worth to remember that there is such an option. Then, within the main function, we can see the classical configuration of the hardware. So, there is a hull in it, there is a clock configuration, and uh, there is uh, the initialization of each peripheral we just selected uh, within the configurator, QBMX or QPIDE. In our case, it will be only GPIO in this exercise. And after this, there is a space for our configuration before the main code will run. Uh, we will not use it. And after this user code end to section, there is a call to OS kernel initialize, which is in fact allocating the memory of the stack dedicated for our operating system. So this is important that uh, this function should be called before any operating system component is created. So this is done in the initialization part. The next step after the initialization of this uh, memory for the operating system is the creation of the components of the operating system with specified within the configuration in QBMX or QPIDE. Please remember that we can add or remove uh, tasks uh, or semaphores within the working operating system, so from, for example from other tasks, but there is an option of course to specify them as well before we will start the operating system. This is the case of this example. Within the configurators we have specified two tasks, task 1 and task 2. Both of them have the same priority, the same stack size is 128 words, and both of them have different functions assigned to them, which would be executed during the time assigned to the task. So within task 1 we'll use start task 1 function, and task 2 will use start task 2 function. And the creation of the task is divided into two steps. The first one is uh, the definition of uh, task parameters. For this, we are using uh, the structure osthread attribute underscore t, which we can see at the beginning, where we are specifying the name, priority, and the stack size of uh, assigned to the task. Of course, this field is pre-filled by the cube generator. And then, on the second step, we are creating the task using the function osthread new. The first argument is uh, the function name which is assigned to the task. The second one is the argument we would like to pass to this function. And the third one is an address of the attribute structure we just filled in a bit before. After this, as a result of this function, we've got uh, in return the handler to the new task, which can be used later on to perform the operation on a given task. So, for example, increase or decrease the priority, delete the task, or put it on different mode, like suspend mode. The same operations we are doing for the second task, using exactly the same flow. So first uh, filling the structure with the parameters and then creating the task using OS treat new function. After we create all of the components we just selected from within the configurator, it is a time to start the scheduler. The scheduler is started by executing the function OS kernel start, and uh, this function is called just before the main while one loop. So, in fact, in our FreeRTOS based application, we never reach the while one loop. Our code execution is finishing on this OS kernel start function. And then, within the job of FreeRTOS, we are just traveling from one task function to the other and we are executing the interrupt procedures, of course. So, once we started the operating system, the scheduler is selecting the tasks for execution. From this moment, we can observe that we will be switched from start task 1 to start task 2, one by one. What we need to do is to fill the body of the functions, start task 1 and start task 2. As uh, we discussed at the beginning, uh, we are not using any arguments, we are not passing any arguments to those functions, and we will do the most basic task uh, body function. Please have a look that this function is uh, in fact built from two components. The first one is at the beginning the place where we can put some values which should be used only at the first run of the task. So the initialization value, some local variables which would be used only by this task. And then we've got the infinite loop. This infinite loop is very important while we are creating the task body functions because we should never exit from the task. 
this is uh, it should be treated like a mini main function in C in classical C. So what we need to do is to fill this endless loop as a let's say first operation just to check whether everything is working. We will use here some task action. I name it as a task underscore action with argument one, and we can assign to this uh, any kind of uh, function like it was proposed at the beginning of this training, just to be board agnostic. So after this action, I propose to send the task from run mode to the blocked mode for one second. To do this, I will use the function osdelay with argument 1000. osdelay is accepting the number of the milliseconds we would like to spend in blocked state. In this case, I'm expecting that my function, my task, will execute task action with argument 1 and then immediately it will go to the blocked state for one second, giving the chance to do some action for task 2. In this case, what we need to do with the task 2? Within the task 2 we will do similar operation, that the only difference would be that uh, instead of task underscore action 1, we will use task underscore action 2. And again, OS delay 1000. What would be the effect uh, of this function we will see a bit uh, later on on the screen. After we process the code, we can compile it using the hammer button. And uh, after a while, when it's done, we can start a debug session, of course, after connecting the board. In my case, I have programmed the task action to send the data over the ITM interface. So this argument one and two, I'm just passing via ITM and I'm observing it within a single wire viewer ITM data console in stm 32 cubeide And as you can see, as both tasks have the same priority and uh, we've got, let's say, the preemptive model, I can see one by one task two, task one, task two, task one. So those are, let's say, working one by one as expected. Let's analyze the situation if we'll not use this OS delay function. In such a case, both of the tasks will be either in running state or in ready state. There will be no blocked state and there will be no space for idle task to be executed because it has lower priority than both of them. So what would be the flow in this case? Task 1 will start its execution for a given period of time defined by the time slice, which is usually one millisecond. It is configurable with a free RTS config.h file and it will be moved from run state to the ready state by the Sysdic. And Sysdic will trigger PentSV, and PentSV will switch context switch from task 1 to task 2. And task 2 will start the execution, till the Sysdic will again trigger the PentSV to switch the context from task 2 to again task 1. And it will be done continuously like this. What would be the execution of task 1 during this one millisecond of time slice? It will send continuously this task action one. So we can see it will be sent as fast as possible because during its time dedicated for this particular task, it is trying to execute as much code as possible from its endless loop. So it can be few iterations of this loop or in case of a really big task, it can be only part of it. What is important is that during the switching of the context, the current state of the code executed by the task is saved on the task space, task stack. So after it will return for execution, it will come back to the state when it finished the job before. So this is how it will work without OS delay. And now let's think what would happen if we will use, instead of OS delay, we will use HAL delay function. So HAL delay function, it is again using some delay, but in this case, uh, it is using the delay of HAL library which is using the time base, which, is, uh, which should be different from the Sysdic. In our case, it is timer 6. And uh, it is not sending our task to any other state. It will still continue within the running mode, but doing nothing. So it will be a pure waste. The effect of this would be the following. We will have the HAL action, sending 1, for example, for task 1, and then HAL delay 1000 millisecond would mean that we will stay within this loop not doing anything for one second till the Sysdic will switch us to the other task. So as an effect on the terminal window, we will see like before task, the effect of task one. So one, two, one, two, but there would be no idle task execution in between. 
So it is highly not recommended to use hull delay function within the task because it is really a pure waste and the operating system is doing nothing except of processing the interrupts, in fact. Let's check what would be the difference if we change the priority of task 1. We'll increase it, so it will be more important than task 2. So let's come back to either stm 32 cubemx or to the cubemx perspective within stm 32 cube IDE and uh, please select R3R2S configuration and within this configuration please come back to task and queues tab. Then let's uh, double click on task 1 name there should be the edit window displayed and increase the priority from OS priority normal to for example OS priority normal 2. It can be any different but important is to have higher priority than previous one. Then press OK. After this please regenerate the project and uh, please come back to the toolchain to main.c file and compile complete project again. Uh, we will not do any software modification but up by our own. Once uh, done, let's see what is the difference within the execution of the code. For these uh, purposes, let's uh, replace OS delay with HAL delay and argument 50 milliseconds. It will be used only to not spam the terminal too much. So for task 2, which has lower priority, we are expecting to have visibility of uh, number 2 and then it will be blocked for 50 milliseconds. For task 1, as it has higher priority, we will do some modifications. We will try to send 5 times our, let's say, action, so task action with argument 1, and then we will put the task to the blocked state for 1 second using OS delay function. Just not to spam terminal too much, I will use again the HAL delay with 50 milliseconds argument, otherwise I would see continuously 11111 in the terminal, which is not a nice view. So let's uh, use it uh, for a debug purposes only and let's try to build the code and uh, as expected the task one will be executed five times and then it will go to the blocked state due to the call of OS delay function for one second and then there would be a chance for task task two task two will be triggered as many times as possible within this remaining one almost one second before task two will be woken up from the blocked state to the ready state. This is why we use these HAL delay functions just to limit number of the occurrences of the loop of the task 2. We could use instead, for example, idle task, which would be executed after, but just for the illustration, we demonstrate this uh, HAL delay. We can do a slight modification with an start task 1 body function and uh, we can comment out the OS delay line, which are, let's say, sending our task from run to the blocked state for one second. Let's see what would be the difference. So let's do this change, compile the code and run it debug session. And uh, as expected, if we remove the OS delay within the task body function, which has higher priority, this task would be executed continuously because it is the only one on the ready list on the higher priority, highest priority, so the scheduler will select it all the time and uh, there would be no chance that task 2 could be executed within these conditions. Thank you for watching this video.